Guys, welcome to a, another commentary done by Diggity Upper Inkhorn. We have Advil starting as the red Terran. Bottom right Inkhorn, we have Scut starting as the blue, not Zerg, but Terran. This is BSL Season 16 Hostel League Round of 32 Group D Losers Match. First game went to Advil. As you can see on the score screen, which I remembered to update this time. Proud of myself for that. However, I did not check the map before hopping into this. It looks like it is going to be on Vermeer, more macro oriented. Given game one and Advil's aggressive macro play, I have to favor him going into this match. There are opportunities for 14 command center plays since it is a four player map. Also barracks into command center builds, potentially. Although obviously Massive risks on both ends. It looks like Advil setting up for front door seal. If I recall, oftentimes Advil would mi mix his playstyle up in between economic aggression and early factory pushes. So I wouldn't be entirely shocked on a four player map like this to see him go for a two factory push. Very early SCV scout making its way top left. He's going to come across Skut space in the last position, unfortunately, but still should be able to, I believe, get in that base before the initial Marine is constructed. Barracks constructing for both players. See if there's a gas take for Scott. It looks like he is leaving that gas. Nope, just kidding. Refinery up for both players. Thank you for the subscription, Moltrap, Ayaya. Out in Twitch land. SCV now making its way. Second SCV moving out. Yeah, this leads me to believe that we're looking at some sort of early aggression from Advil. Scut going to get first scout. SCV is going to cross each other. Problem for Scut though is he's not going to recognize that SCV was coming out any later than usual. However, he will at the very least be able to get scouting information interior to the base before that first Marine. Let's see if that SCV actually holds the ramp does not, nor does it drop anything to prevent construction. Three SCV mining. SCV attacking that supply depot briefly. And Scott's SCV pocketed in that corner. The Marine going to make its way up to that right hand. Two SCV has, have pulled off gas here, but again, that SCV makes its way back. I would not be shocked as soon as that SCV is escorted out to see if two SCV are plopped right back on. Looks like not. Interesting. So Advil actually going for the double scout maybe was hoping on getting the earlier scout. Again with the hidden SCV in the corner. I like seeing that. Barracks floating across to get the scouting information. Two Marines blockading. And as I say, Advil going for the two factory play, it looks like it's actually Scut. Who's going to opt for the two factory engagement? Machine shop being canceled, initial vulture being constructed. No factory machine shop, initial vulture here. So Advil's just going to be flat out outnumbered. Command, command center being constructed. Advil's SCV at the very least sees that there's no movement. So maybe you can make this happen. A little bit of a delay as that factory being lifted off. And we dropped and there were some minerals lost. Opportunity cost with that machine shop. Machine shop now being constructed. That SCV really doesn't want to get out of that factory space. So superior construction is going to be in Advil's favor. This is a long distance to cover. Initial vulture sweeping its way across. Able to kill that initial SCV. Second time that's happened. Vulture wiped out. And now Scut is going to have a superior Vulture force. The barracks will be able to spot it. I don't know that Advil's going to be able to do a lot about it, though. And this SCV hasn't cycled back in to confirm the... Okay, now it has. So now should be a... Yeah. Key bit of information. Bunker being constructed. However, there's only going to be one Marine. Mines being researched. A siege shank would be very helpful here. Barracks spotting the three vultures as they're making the way out. 
Let's see if the Marines go with them. It looks like not. Vulture's making their way across. Single Marine in that bunker, and actually that barracks might distract it for quite a bit of time. With the reinforcement point, that's still going to be a Vulture advantage. I don't know if that bunker is going to be sufficient to negate it as they're able to just quickly, especially with the speed upgrade, encroach into Advil's territory, just skirt right by it. However, the worker lead now for Advil, and that's continuing to grow. Five vultures versus five. Sweeping in, just wants to get SCV kills. SCV's trying to defend themselves. Looks like the vultures are gonna get wiped out. They have managed to wipe out the entirety of this natural expansion. Does Advil go for the counterattack? I suppose even if he does, there's no SCVs to, to breach. So just continuing to rebuild, holding firm at that natural. The barracks having taken damage, going to back right back out. Double machine shop now, siege check upgrade, mine upgrade. We already have a single siege tank in two Marines. Scott with that actually still has the supply lead. Or I should say has the worker lead. Does not have the supply lead, however. Factory being added on to Advil's side of the map. Mines being covered. Advil still playing extremely defensively here. And a third siege tank going to seal things in for Scut. Big supply lead. And this is very reminiscent of game one. Except this time it looks like that barracks going to fall. Potentially. Marines sacrificing their lives for the cause. The vultures still able to get some mines planted. That vulture able to sneak right back out. Second gas being taken. This barracks still in a comfortable position over that natural. But this is very reminiscent of, of game one where Advil going to get some very fine mine placement, but otherwise not in a position really to breach Scut's natural. Scut down on the overall factory count. Let's see if... Looks like he's going to go for an engineering bay and a starport once again. Curious if we're going to see a drop or if we're going to see Cloaked Wraith this time as a continuation of that strategy from game one. Barracks continues to burn overhead. Initial siege tanks being floated out and we see two additional factories plopping down for Advil. So Advil wants to follow this up with a mass troop glut, maybe to close down or box in Scut, potentially wipe him out. But as I say that, so tacking on two additional factories, but also moving out an SCV to grab his third. We are seeing a dropship up to sneak out of this contain. Missile turret as well, which actually might be in range to detect a couple of these mines. Vultures scooping up. Most of the reinforcements for Advil are on the front, so he's going to have to wait on that cycle for things to pay off. Vultures scooting in, trying to attack at this attack force. A couple of those mines cleared out. Skips over that SCV at the third. There are siege tanks that can make their way back, but it's still going to take a while before they're going to be able to clear this out. And it's going to be siege tank versus siege tank. SCVs pulling offline to defend themselves. Looks like that siege tank's wiped out. However, the vulture's still free. One being wiped out pretty solid defense thus far by Advil. And the vulture pinned in the corner now, able to scoop back out. Let's see if it's able to get some additional SCV kills. Working, it looks like, on the SCV on gas, but a defensive vulture sweeping in for Advil. Going to be able to clear that up. Solid defense. Scott still, however, with the worker lead overall. And the dropship able to return home. No third base as of yet for Advil. Especially, which I would expect, actually, with five factory construction behind this. Five siege tank to two out on the front. Advantage Scut. So Scut down on supply, but that's mostly vultures compared to siege tanks. So just a better unit composition for Scut. Scut going up to four factories, but with three machine shops. Going to have a heavy siege tank count. Dropping the double armory in the mid game, slowly 
losing, it looks like, lost a turret on the front to Siege Tank at range with that engineering beta spot. Second drop in the main. Once again, Advil without sufficient defense forces to Goliath scooting up. Advil down to actually 28 SCVs here. And I don't think this was the pause for a potential attack. Able to clear that out, but really getting battered here. Grabbing his third base, we'll be able to mitigate those losses if he can produce three rapidly. Scut grouping up more siege tanks into that dropship. Still very comfortable, has been doing fantastic clearing that out. Again, if he just punches with the grouping of siege tanks that he's going to have to follow, still should be able to break out and grab an additional base. Mines being planted for Advil. Looks like at that 5 o'clock location, two siege tanks, I mean, after those two initial successful drops, wouldn't be shocked. However, we have Goliaths and now turrets to the south, potentially to wipe out that dropship before it lands. But there are two skipping both turrets, and this is actually a sizable attack force, especially if one of the tanks sieges and, yeah, clogs that corner. Nice engagement now for Scut, emptying Advil's main. Advil not even bothering, just going to transfer those SCVs, I presume, to the third. But his factory line is completely exposed. Great play from Scott from a defensive shell. Looks like he might even get some bonus supply depots. SCVs dying as they spawn. So still two bases versus two base, but a larger SCV lead. Scott able to get a good amount of damage with those dropships. Could probably use the dropships to go ahead and clear out some of the attack troopings bottom left as well. Once he pops the meander out and grab his third. Supply lead in his favor. Advil still looking to try to evict those sea shanks from his main. Vulture able to sneak up. Splash damage going to take care of one of them. See if the Goliaths are able to sneak up and grab the rest. Scut. A moving the siege tanks across that minefield. See if he's going to comsat. Otherwise, the vultures trying to sweep in. Those tanks are very well shelled up, but the vultures on attack move rather than forward move here. Siege tank finally being cleared out. Nessie is being drawn back out. 14 worker lead across two bases. Command center has been constructed, and I do believe Scut is going to have plenty of troops to go ahead and sweep out. Yeah, Siege Tank's going to... Well, are they going to clear the mines, though? Eat one mine, two mines. That's two Siege Tanks. That hurts. Sizable factory count there for Scut. Wraith now being constructed. Plus one weapons just finishing. And Advil has more of an aggressive posture to Scut, but Scut has a much better economy. More workers. He just needs to saturate this third base, and he'll be off to the races. Starport being built opposite side. This is also four factory versus six, soon to be seven, with three machine shops versus just the two. One of these factories currently silent, which means the siege tank advantage is going to be in Scut's favor. It has been the entirety of the match and should continue. Thank you for the gifted sub. Out there, piano. Which means Scut in a good position to actually do some of these continuation attacks. Wraith absorbing damage for the dropships to get in. SCV scattering, and that command center might want to lift off. And actually, it's a stroke of luck now that that Wraith was wiped out, because otherwise might have been able to take that command center down. Sea shanks being cleared out, but well worth it. How did those mines not clear? I think they might have gotten splash damaged. Odd. You might want to look back at that one. Command center still floating, unfortunately blockading their own siege tanks. So once again, third being blockaded. That Wraith might be a solution momentarily. Goliath wandering in, able to get on top of that siege tank to open up that third from Advil. Scut has done a fantastic job of being a huge pain across all of these expansions. SCV at the 12 o'clock, maybe to grab that. Scott breaking through. Pressing forward. I'm not sure if this is a press forward mover to... Ooh, 
whipping up a lot of those siege tanks on delay. Fortunately, the Ford siege tanks were initially engaging the vultures, so the follow-up splash is going to be in Scut's favor. However, the continuation damage. Who got the first shot? Looks like Advil got the first shot. Three versus four on that corner. A single turret to at least spot that three o'clock. Curious if Scott going to continue and try to expand into his opponent. That third base still not saturated for Advil. Ten worker lead for Scott overall. Mine's underneath this actually, so eventually a mine is going to be produced on a Goliath or something and maybe do some splash damage on some SCVs. I'll try to keep an eye on that. The barracks floating out also to spot that SCV. As it's... Wow, the timing on that. Did he see it? Okay, he doesn't quite see it yet, but he can just peek out a little bit and we'll see the edges momentarily to see that fourth. That could be an advantage for Advil. Oof. Gonna lose some units to those mines, but sweeping up to clear out what's left of Advil's contained. Supply count's actually even here. A larder bank for Scut. Eight factories up versus a much smaller five factories. A little bit distracted because there's actually an earthquake happening right here. Kind of a mild one where I am located. A little bit of a shake. I'll look it up on Twitter and hear all the... Anybody feel that? It's always what happens in Southern California. These tanks holding the interior spoke, which is denying additional base to Scut. Fourth base is up for Advil. So he might be able to capture an economic... Oh, I want to see this. Economic lead. So this vulture... Okay, so it looks like the siege, their uh, turret being built took out the mine. Vulture is sneaking up, noticing that, yeah, you're not going to be able to take that three o'clock. Engineering bay is going to burn. Advil actually turning this into a match. Worker count even. Scott trying to push up, but the high ground position on the eastern front holding. And so Advil going to maintain that economic lead. He needs, he's got that four bases. He does need to fill in this factory count. Looks like he needs to rebuild that barracks. Perhaps that's why he lost that barracks a lot earlier and didn't rebuild it. So it wasn't able to continue with that factory count. But now Scut with a huge factory lead, if he just macros, should end up with a mid-game advantage. Plus he's got a huge bank to work with. He's cleared out all the mines to the south. Advil scattering, actually. It looks like to engage and stop Scut from grabbing the fourth at six o'clock. Command center's planted. That should be a cancellation. So buying himself a little bit of time. Another SCV wandering forward. Ooh, is he gonna... Okay, that SCV actually needs to stay alive here. Some more Goliaths walking their way slowly across. But that's not gonna stop Scut from grabbing that six o'clock location. That will be his fourth base. So Advil right now up four bases, down in the overall bank. Doesn't have the superior factory count. But... A little bit shocked that Scut hasn't managed to surge ahead in supply at these stages. Maybe having just a little bit of trouble with the macro. Plus two weapons, plus two armor, by the way. Versus just plus one weapons, plus one armor. A supply lead somehow off an inferior factory count from Advil. A lot of that is in SCVs. Scott staging up to maybe open up that three o'clock base. I'm also wondering if maybe there's going to be a counter drop across that six o'clock. Goliath is currently holding that position. Science facility being constructed to make its way for, uh, towards plus two weapons. So Scott is going to hold that weapons advantage for quite some time, and it looks like he's already working on plus three weapons, plus one armor. As long as he keeps... I'm, I'm still surprised. Uh, just larger amount of factories shouldn't mean more troops here, but somehow Advil's still maintaining that overall troop count. Might be just because of the SCV production. So if you deduct 20, right? It's 
132 versus 149. So it is an army lead here for Scott, although at a positional disadvantage here on this standoff. However, has managed to cap bottom left. He has enough resources in the bank to grab both expansions. His main is mined out. His natural expansion is just about to mine out. So that will allow him to scoot SCVs and saturate those four bases. So in a good position now, moving into the late game, it looks like Advil also going to sneak out, maybe grab some bases top left himself. And that's where this detente over that three o'clock expansion could be huge because if Advil's able to deny that over the long term and expand out to the nine o'clock, then he will end up winning the game overall. However, the upgrade advantage massively going to be in Scut's favor. Also, honestly, if Scut wants to do a quick tech switch to Battlecruisers at this stage with what Advil's fielding, he might have an opportunity to do so. SV's on an early transfer, going to do some distance mining back and forth here. Advil also grouping up to maybe to defend and deny that nine o'clock. Scut taking that eight o'clock base at a very exposed position. Four machine shops are there in the background for Advil. Let's see if we can get a look at the, it looks like it's still just uh, eight, well, no, nine factories overall. Scut now making maneuvers to push up and yeah, overwhelming amounts of siege tanks. Reinforcements from both ends. Scut able to claim the high ground, however, for a moment, but Advil looks like he just has more bulk and these siege tanks from the rear haven't joined the fray. They're still holding back. The Goliath's moving too far forward, so it looks like they are gonna get wiped out. And Advil may be overstepping, grouping up those siege tanks. Looks like he's staying just out of range. Let's get able to refill that troop count rather rapidly. Wondering where that attack was happening. Barrick's able to see those SCV. Advil grabbing that base top left, moving in troops to go ahead and deny that nine o'clock as well. Natural expansion now empty, but good saturation already in the bottom left hand expansions, plus another command center on deck with the SCV starting to fill in there. So in the economic and upgrade war, Scut theoretically has the lead, but he just hasn't really positioned forward into Advil at any stage here to cap that lead. Advil also might have an opportunity to attack all of the holdings bottom left. Vulture starting to sweep across, some Wraith spotting territory forward. The Vulture scattering as they've been spotted, try to get some mine placement. The Goliaths need to move forward in position maybe to defend there. It looks like the Vultures are going to be able to sneak up to the 12 o'clock. This many Vultures with the upgrade advantage and the mine's going to be able to clear that up. A handful of SCVs being picked up for Scut. That's going to draw him within the worker lead. So now the supply actually worker lead exactly even. Supply count advantage back to Advil though. And I'm gonna say Advil looks like he might be able to win this out because he still is holding the high ground at the critical nine o'clock and three o'clock to deny those bases. He does need to get another natural expansion up here in the top left to maintain economic output. But if he pushes into something out here, or if he just holds, just lets his economy catch up and Scott just plays defensively, it looks like he's in a situation where he can grab one or even two bases up over and hold from there. Pushing in along the western front, siege tanks getting wiped out. First layer is down, second layer still holding. We got three layers deep of siege tanks here, so Advil looks like he's just going to hold up, doesn't have the troops, but that is opening up a potential vulture lane to sweep to the left. No SCVs really mining at this location, however. Siege tanks walking forward. Tanks not sieged opposite side. Goliath clearing that barracks out so they don't have the scouting information. To know where positionally to send troops. Scott reinforcing 
And it looks like, yeah, Scott just happy to hold. Looks like both locations. Maybe gonna make a shot on the opposite side of the map to open things up. Trying to comp that and get what information he can. Not seeing any... We do have the physics lab in the Yamato. I don't see the starports out yet. They're... Okay, never mind. There they are. Three starports hanging out at the natural. I'm wondering if these dropships are going to get expended to free up some supply as well. Scut with some unseige tanks now moving up. An army's mirroring on the corner, but isn't going to have the high ground. Looks like it's going to scoot in that area that was evacuated by Advil's, or by Scut's army. Swing right back around and engaging from the rear. But again, plus three weapons versus plus two. I would expect Scott's army to hit harder. Regardless, it looks like Advil, through superior positioning and a better engagement, just able to encapsulate that army and wipe out everything. Might even have a free reign towards the natural expansion. The troops might, yeah, need to disengage from the Eastern Front to support. First battle cruiser out, however, moving towards the front. Goliath's there to greet it. And now all of a sudden, a Wraith, Goliath, etc. Able to encapsulate this natural expansion. And Scut, at 26 minutes, suddenly contained at his natural. Scut scurrying to try to bring reinforcements to break the containment, but walking into a siege tank wall and losing a lot of troops for his efforts. And keep in mind, this is with an upgrade disadvantage. Advil's troops finally getting cleared out. Looks like Scut able to overwhelm it. More battle cruisers should be out in some time. Turrets optimistically being dropped by Advil. More siege tanks slowly pushing forward. A race pecking away at the lack of air defenses as well. Siege tanks now up on the high ground, and it looks like that has been cleared out. One cancellation in that turret should be wiped out as well. Banks even. Big supply lead for Scut. That is also, he's got that battle cruiser lead. Some starports in the background for Advil, but I don't see any additional, looks like some starports being built up top left. This might necessitate Rafe. And it is possible for Cloak Wraith to do considerable amounts of damage rapidly to those battle cruisers before Comsat and whatnot is able to even things out. Some Wraith, however, being bled out towards the 9 o'clock for Advil. 200 supply there for Scott. Yamato, we know, was researched. And a sizable attack force regrouping at the 9 o'clock. Critical moments here is Advil moving out with the siege tanks. Looks like a Cloak Wraith, single Cloak Wraith, trying to expend Comsat. Maybe to allow future Wraith to hit exposed battle cruisers, some SCV transferring. I believe to open up supply. I think this is intentional, not for mining purposes. I'll say it's intentional because that makes it feel better. Battle cruisers moving up, not a lot of Goliaths to deal with them. The siege tanks do have the high ground. Scott doesn't have a lot of siege tanks underneath, but once these Goliaths are wiped out, assuming the Goliaths are wiped out, It's going to be close. A Goliath reinforcement, a single shot on that rear Goliath, but it looks like they are going to be able to clear that up. As a result, Advil marching forward. Another fleet of battle cruisers moving to take the place of their fallen brethren and clear the siege tank line up. And Advil walking to his demise, but reinforcements again able to get to the natural expansion. And it looks like they want to go ahead and walk up straight into the main. And the starports are located towards that forward location. So that would be a big infrastructural hit for Scut. Goliath as well taking the lead. Siege tanks engaging them from the high ground. The battle cruiser swing right back to go ahead and clear this up. Looks like also some troops not engaging currently. I'm not sure if Advil's hesitant to dedicate those attack forces or was just a bit of a 
oversight some wraith grouping up maybe to make a run at the battle cruiser count that is forward more battle cruisers now under construction we do see some control towers being dropped opposite side advil hurting for gas right this second the wraith charging forward dodging out of that comm set is that going to precipitate a science vessel or maybe some turret coverage underneath for scott 200 supply keep in mind a good portion of that is in construction for scott he does have the air lead he really hasn't been able to utilize yamato up to this stage scott making movements across that nine o'clock flank advil still trying to make his way into the natural of scott wraith pushing forward once again after that last compsat and i think that might be it for the compsat as the battle cruisers are retreating now a follow-up concept might just not have been on a hotkey but that's not sufficient to save that battle cruiser and the siege tanks now exposed at the six o'clock no mining happening here but the factory lines potentially exposed those siege tanks are going to be critical reinforcements for scott clearing out what's left from advil but advil's air fleet just uh, that's such a that's got to be such a frustrating sound just hearing the pew 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 of the lasers as your army melts some wraith falling out of cloak it looks like they're going to go ahead and retreat but massive damage done advil capping additional bases critically though the three o'clock has opened opened up as as the nine o'clock for scut the battle cruisers continue to surface for him but we do have the opportunity with the starports out here and a sizable enough bank if the gas can be matched for a battle cruiser shift potentially for Advil. I think he's just going to stick. It's interesting that he dropped the starports because it would almost feel like he was with the, his gas problems currently that he was just going to stick to Wraith. Additionally, I don't see where his uh, science facility is. not seeing it anywhere out on the map i'm just going to presume it's out there there it is he does have the physics lab potentially so the potential is there big battle cruiser army with some race support across the three o'clock scut grabbing that three o'clock that could be a huge take right there that 12 o'clock just about empty everything top left mining the battle cruisers swe sweeping forward the rate being wiped out by the Goliaths. And critically, the science facility gonna get taken out before battle cruisers in construction. And it looks like a massive air fleet. More combat being dropped. Let's see if the Wraith get cleared out. They're trying to dodge a lot of that combat. Unsuccessfully, the siege tanks looking to engage. The battle cruisers need to re-engage targets here and focus down those Goliaths as soon as they do. This is a lot of siege tanks that are open to destruction. Looks like the commands that are going to be wiped out as well. It's kind of a pirate victory, though, not a big loss. So Scut getting that three o'clock happily mining. There's GG from Advil recognizing with the lack of gas, the lack of physics lab. He just wasn't going to be able to keep up with the Air Force. So Scut takes game two to even the series up and move on to game three hope you guys enjoyed it thanks for listening